Hi, welcome back. And uh, right now, we will be working on a very interesting question. Okay. It has something to do about the pulley and the block system. Uh, this question is one of those questions that most students, or not students, but most people who try to answer this question would make the same mistake of, of, um, of um, making that justification that it will not move because block A is greater than block B. Okay, so let's take a look at this problem. Let's read it correctly. Okay, so if the mass of A is greater than mass of B, will the blocks move? Let's justify it. Okay, so will do you think it will move? Please take a look at what it's indicated right here. That the surface is smooth, or we can say that the force of friction is technically almost equal to zero or the value is negligible okay, so it's negligible so it's so small that we can just ignore it it doesn't really affect it so this time we say that m is greater than lowercase m m is the mass of a and m is the mass of b okay you will say it's not going to move okay it's not going to move because this mass is greater okay so heavier object okay remember this is not an atwood's machine again this is not an atwood machine anymore but it's a pulley block system now what are some of the things that we must consider again Similar to Atwood's machine, pulley's mass and the string's mass are negligible. The friction in the pulley system is negligible also. So again, there's no stretch or slippage on the string. Okay, no stretch or slippage on the machine on the string. Pulley's uh, friction is negligible, and then the weight of the string and the pulley is negligible. There is what we call moment of inertia that we will learn in the next couple of videos that we will go over. And that is a different topic and it's not part of this problem. So they're not taking into consideration moment of inertia. However, there will be some problems that they will combine those two topics together. But at this point, I'm just making it clear to everyone that we're not considering the moment of inertia. Okay, so let's move on. So will it move? I will not answer the question yes or no yet. What I'm going to do is try to analyze and apply Newton's law of motion concept here to see if it will move or not. Let's do some experimentation and calculation. But definitely I would say that it will move. So free body diagram. Okay, so free body diagram. Okay. So there are two objects, so two bodies in a system. So we have block A. What I'm going to do is draw my X and Y. Y and X, the intersection will be my dot. Let's draw it here. And then, same thing with block B. This is your y-axis, and this is your x-axis. And I will draw my dot right here. So this is block A, and this is block B. Let me just put A, then B over here. Okay. So A and B. First thing that always exists in both of them. Mass of A, mass of B. Mass of A is greater than mass of B. So if I would say I have three over here. Okay, so if I have three right here, I will have F of G. Okay. Right here in section B, I know it's less. So what I'm gonna do, if I have three in one side, I will just put, hmm, I'll put maybe one, okay. 
if I put one or two, so this will be our f of g and b. Okay. Now for letter a, there is what we call normal force that is going against the force of gravity. And you have the same length because it is on a horizontal plane. So this is our normal force Fn. There's another force acting on our on our block, and that is the string connected here, and that is your force of tension. Okay, so that will be my force of tension. I would say this is my force of tension. F of t. I'm just using one section maybe. Maybe it's a small amount because it's a small force. Now if we take a look at your graph, free body diagram for letter B. You have two sections of force of gravity and what is preventing it from just falling straight? There is what we call force of tension. And that force of tension should be less than the force of gravity on B because there is what we call motion. But you will still argue with me that there will be no motion. Okay? I would say there is motion because of a very clear indication that there's no forces acting against it. Okay? So we have this tension. The tension is moving to the right, so I would put tension right here. Okay, So tension. Tension, tension, and tension. Okay. Now, let us analyze letter A, block A, with Newton's first law of motion, net force. So the net force acting on A. So let's talk about your x-axis and then let's talk about y-axis x and y what are the forces acting along x we have positive ft and then for a for y-axis we have force of gravity negative normal force going up Fn minus F of G. Okay. So what can we say with this, the difference? Y-axis means that there's no difference. So they're the same. So it means that F of N is simply equivalent to Fg of A. Or I can say that F, the normal force, is simply equivalent to the mass of A, which is uppercase M, multiplied by G. So they're equal. Okay, so equal. But there's no motion. Yes, it's not going to move. It's not going to move up and down because of the block. They're equal, so we know it's zero. Okay, so now we're turning into a little bit more... Uh, what we call, we're doing the shortcut. So T, force of tension. So we have tension going to the right, but there's no opposing force. So what can we say when there's no opposing force? Nothing to oppose it. So there is an unbalanced force. So by this, it means that there is an unbalanced force in our x-axis that will move along the x-axis or the horizontal axis. So I can then say, since there is an unbalanced force, there is an unbalanced force, acceleration is not zero. Okay, so acceleration is not zero. Since there is an unbalanced force, acceleration is not zero. So we can say that here that F of T is simply equivalent to mass of A multiplied by the acceleration of A. Is it positive or negative? If it's going to the right, then it's positive. 
So I can say that Ft is M of A. For letter B, or block B, let's analyze. There's no forces along the y-axis, so that's that's even uh, along x-axis. So it's even simple that your tension, that your forces along the y-axis is something that you just need to consider. Okay. So now, force along y-axis. Okay, so force along y-axis. Same thing, okay. we notice that the tension force is not strong enough to keep it from, prevent it from moving. So we can then say that this one would have an acceleration of negative A because they do have the same acceleration because they're connected to each other, but the only difference is that the other one is negative because it's moving downward. So the summation of forces, what are the forces acting on the block? So summation of forces, positive, that is the tension force minus F of G of B minus M of A. This time it's lowercase. Let's change it and clean it. Ft minus mass times G equals negative mass times A. So if I move my... my other uh, variables to the other side of the equation because I want to keep my force of tension by itself and I would say this one will turn into positive so mg minus m of g m of a so therefore we know that the acceleration is not zero okay so the acceleration is not zero if we want to equate those two together to see, to prove that they're not zero, then we can say that it's MA. Let's equate those two. So that's MA. That is equivalent to MG minus MA. Let's combine those two together. Because M and G. So now we know that this will be M plus M equals MG. Or acceleration is simply equivalent to G M M plus M. So right away we know that there's no opposing force against the block that is on the smooth surface that's why the object will move okay so we can say what's our claim let's just put some draft right here block a will move what is our evidence and reasoning Plus reasoning. There isn't any force acting against the tension force of the spring of the string. That's why there is an imbalance force causing it to move. And that's why there is an acceleration. Okay, hope you understand this. Okay, you can watch it again. Come up with your own explanation, research more, and then let me know in your comments if you do have, or you can send me an email, and I will be happy to answer your questions.